hello hello welcome back to my page uh, it's been a little while I was on vacation and then at the end of that vacation I had food poisoning so I am back and more thankful than ever I had the best vacation I've ever had it was relaxing it was fun it was romantic it was heartfelt it was like everything that I could have wanted best I've felt um, in a long time. Uh, much needed vacation, time with my love and my family. So, have a wonderful trip. Ends with the food poisoning thing. Um, still obviously had work last week and not being able to consume much, it was a clearing for me. And I went to acupuncture and I talked to my acupuncturist about, you know, I wanted to make sure that whatever I consumed was clear. And I talked to her about how interesting it was that I had the best week that I've had maybe ever. And for it to then kind of end on this note of not feeling well, of bringing up a lot of sadness, a lot of different fear that has been present, but not this strongly. And she told me that when we go through a healing, oftentimes we need to be in a really good space to support ourselves. So that week of vacation and dancing and drinking and eating and joy helped create the container for an even deeper healing. And really that healing for me was about detaching, continuing to detach from the idea that I have to be perfect for all people, especially my family. So wonderful experience now that I'm through the thick of it and I'm on the other side, appreciating everything that I learned and the ways that I've grown. One of the biggest things I want to share with you today that I got from this two week experience that I had is that, uh, well, let's do a little uh, practice. So think of someone that you deeply care about that you feel is in need in some way. So identify that person or that thing, maybe it's an animal or a situation. And, and maybe say out loud, write it down, say it to yourself, what do you feel like that person needs? What does that person need? What do you think they need from you? What would be helpful for them to receive from you. So whatever your answer was for that, that is actually the thing you said that person needs of you is actually what you need of you. So for me, my answer was this person, these people need my love and attention. But really, because community, people in our family, especially the ones we love the most, are the greatest teachers of what's going on inside of us. Because we put on others, we project what we're thinking, what we're feeling. So, it's not that I needed to give someone else my time and attention. I needed my time and attention. I needed to do what was best for me. And this is said in so many different ways that you can't pour from an empty cup, that you have to take care of yourself before you take care of another. And when you're in the space of feeling like someone needs something of you, that's not coming from the innermost self, the, the wisest self, the intuition, that soul part of you. That when we worry, when we're concerned, that's actually coming from the ego. So when you look at another and thinking they're in need, maybe you look at the Ukraine and you feel so deeply for them. They need this, they need that, they need this. Turn that need, that pointing finger of you need right back to, your, to yourself. Fulfill your own needs. And maybe that feels like a challenge, 
maybe it's like, oh my gosh, it feels easier to take care of someone else than it is to take care of me. And that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. How challenging it can be to care for ourselves. It's so much easier to care for another person, isn't it? If, <laughs> you know, I, I have a history since I was little of not liking to wear, not liking coats. I like, I like to be free. I don't like restriction. I like tank tops. I like dresses. I like to be able to be free. And coats have always represented restriction to me. Also, my parents telling me I had to wear a coat. That did not fly with me because I don't like being told what to do. I like to decide for myself. And that actually stems from, I always debate, do I keep going with this? Yes. Um, that stems from me not really trusting my parents because I felt something so strongly. They told me, no, no, Laura, you're overreacting. But my intuition was accurate. But I was young. I, I, I didn't understand that even if someone older than you, someone who you think is wiser or smarter or more experienced than you, says something that that is truth. But I will remind you as long as you need to be reminded that you know what's right for you. You know what's true for you. But sometimes we have to take some um, space to clear out everyone else's input that we've taken on, everyone else's opinion of what they think we should be doing. And I'm not saying other people have put that on you. Maybe you've asked. So I had a mistrust of people giving me input. Oh, wear a coat, it's gonna be cold, and then it's beautiful and 60. I'm like, mm-mm, nope. So I'm actually healing that myself right now because my now partner, he knows me very well, knows I don't like being told what to do. But when he is advising me of something, it's because he has kind of played out the pros and the cons and he's very well aware of me. He's taking, taking into consideration what I want, how I feel, how I move about life. So I learned this last night. When he suggests something and I'm in a tough space, which I was last night, to, to take a moment and, and really filter that in, does that resonate with me? Is he accurate here? And he was. And, and it's building the trust within myself so then I can turn around and trust others. Um, but the same thing of like kind of caretaking ourselves when, you know, if I had my nieces and nephews here and we were going to go to the park and play, I would grab them all sweatshirts or a little light jacket. For me, I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. So that's something I'm healing as well. I am so, it's so easy for me to care for someone outside of myself. The self-love stuff is a little bit more challenging. So as we are entering, especially on the East Coast, this, this spring time, the nicer air is coming in, you may feel a mix, maybe you feel anxious, but I like to flip the script a little bit and ask you, is it anxiety? Is it this, this mind, is it this ego thinking into the future, trying to figure it all out to protect yourself? Or, are you just a little excited and a little bit nervous? Because you can feel something new on the horizon. Witnessing people suffering like the, I mean the Russians and the Ukrainians and the surrounding areas often can inspire you to appreciate what you do have. I was just sitting outside and I and the, uh, recently have been more concerned of, oh, you know, I wanna make sure I have sunscreen on, protect my skin, yes, that's important. And I was sitting out, I don't even know what that's called, the pergola, right? The little slats above you, so it creates a little shade. I was sitting there watching these robins and these hawks, the hawk duo that um, are mates that live right next door in a tree. Um, you know, they're flying around and I'm watching this and I'm like, I literally live in paradise. I was in the Dominican Republic witnessing such scarcity 
but also such depth of being. And so to be home and the quiet and the safe and I can lay down there, close my eyes and not worry about a damn thing. Not worry about some snake, some predator of a person. I really don't have to worry about that here. And how fortunate I am. So there is this like, I wanna say spicy. It's not really spicy, but it's like, it's hot energy. It's getting things moving. So maybe you've been feeling particularly overwhelmed, a little bit congested in the head department. So know that that is normal. We go through these phases, these transitions, and when things are transitioning, it can get a little wild. It can feel a little crazy. So remembering, especially if you're a sensitive soul, you tend to pick up on other people's stuff. Um, when there's a massive event happening in the world, maybe you feel a little downtrodden, a little grief. Remember to ground in yourself. Like between each session, it's almost like I don't wanna carry someone else's energy over to the next person. So I clear myself with washing my hands. I sometimes open up the windows, the doors. Sometimes I go for a little walk outside, sit in the sun, put my palms in the sun. It's really just what helps you reconnect to you. So in being more grounded in yourself, it allows you to make decisions from the, the innermost self, from that guidance, from that intuitive, wise, loving source within you. Because everything that you think about, that you feel, you're under some sort of influence. So if you've been watching the news, you're probably gonna trend towards being under the influence of fear. If you've been taking care of your body, balancing your watching of the news and feeling that fear and getting enough rest and eating in a way that is sustainable and helpful for your body, you're generally under the influence of love. And there's not a right or wrong influence to be under. Just understand there's things that every action has a reaction. So if you're acting from fear, you make a change out of fear, well, the reaction's probably gonna taste a little similar to that. But when you take the time to ground yourself, as things are a bit chaotic and things are transitioning and the energy is hyping up again, this kind of excited, nervous energy, and you take the time to continuously check in, check in, check in, come back to your body. Am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Do I need rest? Do I need space? When you go out in the world, when you're having conversations, you will be coming from this centered place instead of this kind of frazzled, scattered place. Again, not a right or wrong. One just feels a little bit more grounded and solid and peaceful. So if, if your desire is for more peace, then taking the time to center, to ground, to check in with yourself and what you need, it will be huge. I was eating my lunch um, between sessions and I was like, oh, you know what? I wanted to watch that show and I'm watching this show <clears throat> and I'm like, I'm starting to feel like I don't wanna keep watching this right now. So then I pause it and I'm like, oh, there's only a minute and a half left. Like I might as well finish it. And I was like, interesting. I'm, I'm over this, but there's a part of me that feels like, oh, just stay committed, just finish it up. But I turned off the TV and I was like, nope, I'm gonna go outside, that feels better to me. And I got to see these robins and I'm seeing these robins and their chests are so bright and beautiful and they're like listening for the worms and eating and just so bright and robust and beautiful. And I'm, I do try to look at the natural world and understand the message for me. It's different for everybody. And I'm watching this Robin and it's very aware of me and I'm just staying still watching it. And his, it was a he, um, cause I saw a female and a male next to each other and it's very clear which one's the male and the female. And he's just so beautiful and elegant and proud and steady, aware of his surroundings, aware of the potential threat, me and the hawks in the sky. 
while also staying focused on what he needs to do, which is eat and prepare for babies. The hawks flying around. Um, it's a couple, I saw the mama hawk for um, pretty much all winter she posted up on this tree outside. I know I've mentioned it here before. Um, and recently I saw the male come in and the male's quite a bit smaller and he generally hangs like below the limb that she's on. And I saw them flying above and they're kind of doing this dance and um, you know, the air really carrying them. I'm watching them climb higher and higher and then one dips off and he kind of looks like he's dive bombing and then he catches, um, I forget what it's called, whatever it is, the thermals, right? Catches the thermal and they're just cruising about really like dancing with each other. And the message I got from that, again, just my interpretation, I'm like, what am I seeing here? What am I witnessing? It's like allowing the thermals of life, the winds of life to carry you where you need to go. And at any point, if you need to kind of dive bomb, if you need to take a sharp turn in directions, you can do that. But life really does carry you where you need to go. So I told you I had vacation then I came back, had food poisoning, just not in a great space. I had my black belt boot camp, which is for the next three months, every Friday um, on top of regular training. And we have to qualify with some physical requirements and I haven't eaten a solid meal, right? In eight days or so. So I'm in a little rough shape, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do the thing and if I pass, I pass. If I don't, I don't. Like, I'm, I'm really indifferent. I'm just, so then I say to Brad, I'm like, you know what? Let's go visit um, the dogs because his parents, his mom has passed now, but at his parents' house, they have two dogs. So we go over. And one of the dogs hasn't been feeling so well. She's had a liver issue. They weren't sure if it was cancer or what have you. So we go over and she's lost a lot of weight. She doesn't even get up off the couch to say hi. And her and I are very close and I feel her. She's skin and bones and she's just like dozing. She's so tired. She gets up, she stumbles a little bit. And you know, Brad's dad had said like, I'm not sure if she's done yet. So we call him, we talk, we discuss. We decided to put her down. Um, as soon as possible so she didn't have to suffer anymore she wasn't eating um <laughs> actually like really clearing out her bowels just not well and hard decision but ultimately to assist a dog and no longer suffering is kind of the path you make so we bring her to the vet to put her down and then Brad and I he had to go teach the kids boot camp and then my boot camp and it's just kind of like you know life I don't even know why we felt like we needed to go over there, but we did. We go over, we see her like that, and it's like, okay, the next natural step for us is to make this appointment. She can't be here anymore. This is just not right. You know, she's suffering alone, and it's it's just it's sad. She's starving. She won't even drink water. So, you know, life carries us to the vet. We're at the vet. See her get put down. Don't ever want to do it again. Won't do it again unless a friend in need or family. Like, who am I kidding? I'm probably going to do it again. Anyways, um, and then, you know, we get carried to the dojo where we're going to train. We're, we're, I'm running around the track. We have to do a mile. I am not a runner. I hate, I hate it, but I have to do it to get into this. And I'm running, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't even breathe. And I look up to the sky, and the moon is about half full at this point. And there's two stripes of clouds, or maybe even like jet, whatever that is. And, and they're like this, and the moon is connecting the two. Made this perfect A, and the dog we put down hours earlier, her name is Annie, or Annabelle. And I looked up and I was like, thank you so much. Like, when you're running, I don't know if you run, but if you do, when's the last time you like looked up at the sky? <laughs> I've never done that before, but I felt called to, and it was like, as if life was like, look, 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 it's okay. And I was like, right, Annie, I did a really hard thing today, and this mile on the, on the scale of hard isn't all that hard. I'm gonna keep running. And I did, and I did um, under 10 minutes, which was really good for me. It was a 9.40. And um, so yeah, watching the hawks fly about, I'm like, right, life is just gonna carry us forward. When we're presented with the time to choose to act, we will. But when we're caught up in our head, should I do this? Should I do that? Is this right? Is this wrong? Should I help them? Should I call them? It's like, pause. What do I need? How am I feeling? 
How can I best support myself? And of course, there's things we have to do, right? Like on the plane ride home, I don't wanna to have to get up and go to the bathroom 8,000 times, but it's almost a five hour plane ride. Guess what? I had to, I had to. <laughs> I didn't want to, but there's just some stuff we have to do and kind of getting over that. And the rest where we have free will, where we have choice, letting life carry you to where you need to go. And if you don't know yet, you don't know the answer, you don't know what to do, then maybe it's not the right time. And even admitting that like, yeah, maybe it's not the right time to make this decision. And I am open to the help or the support that's gonna help me make that decision. And, and to let the help in, to let the support in, to let your mind quiet and coming back into this centered place of what is it that I need right now that takes trust. But trust gets built over time. It's not an instant thing. So I hope this was helpful. I think I'm done now. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all your love and support and your likes and your comments and your subscribes and your bookings. Much appreciated. I love you all so much and I will talk to you soon.